Welcome to a video on instrumentation amplifiers. So, in this video, we are going to look at how we get to the instrumentation amplifier. The derivation is basically based on a couple of amplifiers that we have done before. Then, we are going to design a typical instrumentation amplifier and look at some design considerations, things that you need to think about. Um, there will be some analysis tips during one of the designs and then we will look at the simulation of this amplifier and this will be the graphical representation or help to understand how this works. Okay. Then we are going to look at the improved instrumentation amplifier, some configurations and simulations because the instrumentation amplifier as is has some shortcomings and things that you need to fix or look at when you build one. So let's get started. So the instrumentation amplifier is an adaptation of the difference amplifier. So the difference amplifier has some advantages that we can get common mode gain out of it. So the ability to reject signals and then amplify in differential mode. The disadvantages, however, is that if you want a low common mode gain, we can only have a low differential mode gain. And for a high common mode gain, so one that's greater than one, so not rejecting noise as effectively, we can have a high differential mode gain. So the two is kind of connected to one another. So we need some 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 sort of gain stage to help out. Then lastly. The input impedance of this amplifier is just two times R3. So the input resistance is determined by those two resistors. Okay, so ideally we want a low common mode gain, a high differential mode gain, and a infinite input impedance. Okay, so this one can have differential mode. And as discussed in video four, the common mode gain is dependent on the resistors. So high tolerance, high common mode gain, low tolerance, low common mode gain. Okay. So what about if we add some amplifiers to our difference amp? So the non-inverting amplifier, we have the advantage that you can have a high voltage gain. We have a ideally infinite input impedance, but it has no differential aspects. So to combine the two, we can place one of these non-invertings at the input of each of the different amplifier inputs. So we will get the configuration looking like this one here. So we now have the input impedance, we can get a high gain, and we have the common mode. So with that, these two amplifiers will be responsible for having the high gain, and this stage here will be responsible for having the low common mode gain. So best of both worlds. So since this is just a cascade of amplifiers, the gain is 1 plus R2 over R1. These two will be have equivalent resistors and equivalent resistors on the difference amplifier as well. And this is the gain of the instrumentation amplifier. Okay. So. The two resistors with a ground can be made into one lumped element with two times the value of R1. 
Okay, so we can also rewrite this equation as 2 times r2 over 2 times r1, where the 2s will cancel. But this is handy when we need to derive other equations, is to remember that we can rewrite this as 1 plus 2r2 over 2 times r1. Okay. So things to think about when designing the instrumentation amplifier is that we want to keep the gain of A3 or amplifier 3 as low as possible. So typically we can make this gain less than 1, which means that we need to have a higher gain on the input stage, but having a lower gain for this amplifier less than one we will have a very low common mode gain okay so acm decreases as we decrease the gain of this stage so our rejection of noise becomes very good if we do this okay so this will carry the remainder of the gain and one thing to remember is that these op amps has a cut off frequency a transition frequency at high frequencies and that is directly connected to the gain of the amplifier so if we make the gain too high we will have a very small bandwidth okay in that case if we need more frequency out of our amplifier we could rather split the gain between the two stages but that comes with a sacrifice of our common mode gain just just some, some things to think about people don't necessarily think about the gain band of product of amplifiers and then at high frequencies the instrumentation amplifier does not function properly we will have a look at this in in the simulations just to to show you about the gain bandwidth product of the amplifier and the cutoff frequency. So to to rectify it, you usually have multiple amplifiers in a system. Okay. So plain, straightforward design of instrumentation amplifier. Design an instrumentation amplifier with a gain of 80 volts per volts. Design this last stage to have a uh, common uh, to have a gain of 0.5 volts per volt, choose E12 values for your components. So we can take this 0.5 and set it directly to R4 over R3. We choose R3 value and we get R4, choose E12 and that will give us a new A3 value. And then A2 and A1 is the final gain of 80 that we want divided by this 0.56 and from there on we can choose a value for resistor 2 and find resistor 1's value the R1 value that you find you need to double that up for the final component because this is 2 times R1 and the E12 value is 1.5 Ks okay so if you multiply these resistor ratios with each other, you will find that you have a differential gain of 75. And the common mode gain, the common mode is based off this last stage. If you go in the rewatch video 4, you can add the tolerances in on these components. And that will give you your common mode gain or else your common mode will just be equal to 0. So a 5% components, minus 74.5 millivolts per volts, and 1% components, 14.5 millivolts per volt. So every time that we have our components more accurate, our common mode rejection ratio will improve. Okay, so go and do this analysis when you designed the stage. If you have a higher gain on this stage like in video 4 we had a, a gain of 10 for this stage 
the common mode gain was about 200 minus 200 millivolts per volts so with increasing gain for this stage we will have a increase in this common mode so if we decrease the gain the common mode will decrease and if we select better components our common mode will also decrease okay so good components low gain 8.1 and 8.2 carries the bulk of the gain if the differential gain of 75 is too low for you you could change this r1 selection choose the value downwards to 1.2 kilo ohms and you will have a higher gain okay the second case people sometimes want the gain of an instrumentation amplifier to be adjustable so case two is design instrumentation amplifier of a variable gain between 8 and 80 volts per volts um, design this third stage with 0.56 volts per volts okay since that is the previous problem we just took it as is for this one so the same resistor ratios will go and we need to use a 10 kilo ohm variable resistor for our adjustments okay so two times r2 is being replaced with a fixed resistor and a variable resistor so the variable resistor has a minimum and a maximum so 0 and 10 kilo ohms so for the maximum gain is when this resistor value is at its lowest so r var is at zero so the maximum gain is just dependent on the fixed resistor value and then the maximum uh, sorry minimum value is dependent on r fixed plus r variable at its maximum or full scale value so two times r1 is being replaced with two equations so for the maximum gain and the minimum gain we get two equations so one is just r fix and this one is r fix plus for 10 kilo ohms and we have two equations that we can solve simultaneously and we find that our fixed resistor value is one kilo ohm and our r2 is at 70.95 kilo ohms and the closest e12 is 80 kilo ohms so just by taking the two gains that we have dividing it by 0.56 setting up two different equations solving them simultaneously we can solve our resistor problems so let's jump into the simulator and check out our designs so i set up our simulation to do 10 milliseconds of simulation i'm using the tl0 seven fours in this problem i made this resistor a parameter so that i can show you the gain bandwidth product a bit later on so at this point it's just dot param r is 1.5 kilo ohms so this is a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor and we will be playing with these other commented out steps later so if we input a 100 millivolt signal we should get out something in the range of seven and a half volts with our design so let's run the simulation and see what we get and seven and a half okay so our instrumentation amplifier is working according to the design so let's change this to 1.2 kilo ohms that was the one suggestion and our gain improved but our op amps will now be clipping because this is way beyond 
80 uh, volts per volts. So our initial choice of 1.5 kilo ohms was not too bad. Okay, so an instrumentation amplifier is working. Let's look at the gain bandwidth product that I was talking about earlier. Um, so for this, let's put on our AC analysis and let's step this resistor value. So I'm going to change this resistor from 150k, uh, sorry, 150 ohms to 1.5k to 15k. So this will be a large gain, a small gain, and a much smaller gain. So if we run this, Let's let's do the transient first. So you'll see that we have our smallish gain with 15 Ks, the 1.5 K, and the 150 ohms is saturated. So doing the AC analysis from 1 Hertz to 10 megs. We will see three lines. I'm quickly going to remove a phase here and show phase. This is our lower gain with our 15 kilo ohms. The 36 dBs here is with our 1.5k and with 150 ohms where our gain is highest right here. So with our higher gain, you'll see that this graph starts to fall off early. With our medium gain, it starts to fall off a bit later. And with our lower gain, this starts to fall off much later. So here you can see the gain bandwidth product nicely in work. Um, all of these lines converge at the same point. So the lower that the gain of the amplifier is, the higher the bandwidth of your amplifier will be. So the one typically in the data sheet will be right here at this point so just under two megahertz for your transition frequency which is kind of typical for the tl074 um so yeah every time that we increase the gain the bandwidth of our amplifiers will decrease so if you're doing a measuring a sensor here at 20 kilohertz These top two will be a bad idea because you will already have your amplifier in cutoff region. So it would be better to split up the gain between multiple amplifiers to get your gain and the bandwidth of your amplifier. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the common mode stuff so here i have amplifier set up for common mode and i already changed the resistors to include their tolerances changing these will not do anything to our common mode again this is purely the differential Changing around here will not do a thing to our common mode. So if we run this simulation, we should see that 74 millivolts popping up for a 1 volt input. And there we have it. Our 74 millivolts peak. And it should be inverted from the original signal because that was a negative. And there's our common mode. So this is a very uh, small common mode signal for a very large input. So this will reject noise quite well. Okay, so you can see that this is purely dependent on, on the second stage. So let's change these resistors, run this, and there was absolutely no change 
in our common mode. We can even change this resistor value and there will be no change in our common mode. So this input stage here has no effect on our common mode gain. Okay, just as a note, this here is responsible for the common mode. Nothing else. Right, here I have our amplifier set up with our variable and our fixed. This is just a normal resistor which I gave a parameter and I draw it a little arrow to make it a, a variable. And I set up a step with our parameters for R between 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohms. You can't make this a zero. It will not accept it. So just make it 1 ohm. So we are going to simulate this with this resistor being 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohms and see if we met our requirements of a 8 to 80 volts per volt. So let's run our simulation. Let's take our output. This is very close to 800 millivolts from a 10 millivolt signal. So that is almost, almost 80. And if we check out this signal here, 10 times 8 is 80. So almost 8 volts per volt for that one. Okay, so there is our variable amplifier test built and simulated. Okay, now the last thing that we're going to jump into is that we have some problems with our instrumentation amplifier with DC offsets that you need to solve if you build one of these. Um, we won't see the issue in simulation here because these op amps are matched. Although they are not perfect op amps, the problem is being subtracted. We want to look at when there is an imbalance between the different amplifiers. So let's go and have a look at those. So one of the problems that you'll find is these are gain stages and the op amps has a DC offset internally, which is very small DC voltage, but with a high gain, it becomes quite a large voltage problem. And this translates into our next stage. So this can, can become a couple of volts from a few millivolts. So to get rid of this, you can add DC blocking capacitors or in terms of this amplifier, a high pass filter stage in between. So the DC from this first stage will not go into the second stage. You will not see this problem in a simulation necessarily since the op amps will be identical. For my simulation, I tweaked the op amps a little bit so that we can, can actually see the effect. Okay. So the DC effects of op amps we will discuss in a later video in, in, in details. But there is a DC voltage that tries to get through. We add a blocking capacitor and if you want to design the capacitor, you choose a low frequency. So something typically not part of your amplifier's operation. If you're trying to amplify DC voltages, then this is not the solution to go for. I would suggest another amplifier type. But for AC signals, this works perfectly fine. So let's pick 100 hertz. This also improves blocking for AC power lines and whatnot. So 50 hertz for where we live, 60 hertz for the US. Um, so those also get damped a bit. Um, and you can design this the same way as a normal filter. So the cutoff frequency 
C1 times R3 over here is the time constant. And you can just fill in the values, choose a resistor, find a capacitor. It's typically better to choose a cap than the resistor. But the closest cap here is 50 nanofarads, and that amounts to a frequency of 106 hertz. So that will do fine. And you can just add capacitors, and that will remove the DC. Okay, that's the DC from the first two stages. If the second stage is a high gain stage, there can also be DC offsets on the output. So there is two methods to get rid of this. Um, it is to create a, a offset of your own and subtract that, or to add integrator circuit as feedback. Okay, so rather than the words, the picture speaks more. You can have a voltage divider with a buffer circuit, so that there is no loading on this R4 value over here. So you can select the voltage, this could be variable resistor and have a buffer so the voltage that you create will be sitting right here and you can deduct it from the output voltage okay but with a change in power source or if your power source is not regulated this needs to be continuously adjusted and that is that is not a good way to do it um so, a better way would be to replace this voltage source here with something a bit more adaptable. So, if we take the output and put it into an integrator, only the DC will remain. So, the DC voltage here will be placed directly on this point. It is inverted and subtracted thus into our amplifier right here and gone is all the DC voltage on the output and this happens automatically. So if there is any DC drift in your circuit, you don't have to continuously adjust it. This circuit will do it on its own. But we will discuss integrators in a later video, but we will show you in simulation this one and not this voltage divider mess over here this is very very manual very ancient um so let's jump into simulations of the the two configurations so first the filter and then the integrator so to have a look at the dc problem uh, i tweaked the TL074 models a bit, so they have different DC offsets and that they are not quite similar. So if I run this amplifier and we take the output, you'll find that our the top of our signal is at 5 volts and the bottom is clipping already. So this has been moved downwards with the DC offsets. Okay, so you can clearly see that there is a DC offset being generated in our circuit by the op amps. So I'm going to jump over to a simulation where I already added the caps and stuff ready to go. So with the caps in, I changed the simulation a bit so that there is a bit of time before we start recording data. So the caps has some time to charge up and we don't see the signal drifting across the screen. So this op amp is being tweaked and these two are normal TL074. So there is a DC offset on this amplifier right here. And if I run the simulation and we check this point, you can see that there is a DC offset. And if we go to the output, all the DC has been removed. 
Okay, so none of the DC is crossing over from the amplifier first stages into the differential stage. Okay, so that is the DC being removed. If we do an AC analysis, you'll find that our cutoff frequency is here at 100 Hz, just like we designed it. If you increase the values of these capacitors, the cutoff will be much lower. Um, but remember, if you pick two large capacitors here, they have a considerably longer charge up time and your signal can drift for quite a while um, in simulation before that is sorted. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so that is dealing with DC offsets from this first stage. Let's jump over to simulation where the second stage also has the DC offset and the integrator included. Right, so here I have this first amplifier as a not perfect. I used the same one for the integrator so that we have a DC offset on this one as well. See how that's being treated. And this last op amp here, I picked a very large DC offset since the common, the, the gain of this stage is very low so that we can actually see an effect. And you saw that in the first simulation of this. So having integrated here should ensure that we have absolutely no DC on the output. So if we quickly cut that link and run this simulation, You'll see that this is drifted downwards towards minus eight and here at the top sitting at seven. And if we check the output of our integrator, there is a very small signal sitting on this, but there is DC on it. Okay, so let's join the integrator with our circuit here, run it. Okay, our DC is here at roughly 525. And if we look at this, the DC from the output has been removed. Okay, so to cater for any DC problems with your op amp, add capacitors in between here and add integrator as feedback and you will have no DC offset problems in your amplifiers whatsoever. That is instrumentation amplifiers and improvements on instrumentation amplifiers. Thank you for watching.